Hi everyone. I want to start this video off with a little story that happened um, just yesterday, which is why I decided to do a video on it. Now, keep in mind, I see probably 40 or 50, sometimes 60 dogs in, in a day that are coming and going, nail trims, baths, boarding, daycare, those kind of things that are going on. I used to own a boarding facility in Newport Beach, California, and down there we see dogs all the time, and 4th of July is a big time down there. It's very loud, so anybody that lives down there knows what I'm talking about. The reason I bring that up is because I have seen panic attacks from dogs before. But yesterday I saw one in a dog that was horrifying. And it's not 4th of July. So what brought that panic attack on is hard to determine. But what's more important and why I want to have this, video, this conversation with you guys about this video um, that I've decided to talk about today is because I've talked about anxiety and ways to help our pets with anxiety. But there's a difference between anxiety and a panic attack. And I want you to know the difference and what you can do about it if that happens, if you find yourself in that situation with a dog with a panic attack. So why panic attacks happen are kind of a mystery, both in humans and in, in our pets. We're not really sure exactly what, what the, like is there something going on with the brain chemistry and what exactly is happening. But what can cause a panic attack can be anything from loud noises, to smells, to something that they see, to memory, um, something that they're reminded of that can cause those, those, those attacks. And what's important to know the difference between anxiety and a panic attack is that is exactly what it is. It's an attack. It happens quick. It happens for reasons that you may not ever find out because we're dealing with our pets and so it's really hard for us to communicate and understand what is going on with them. Of course, 4th of July type situations, we definitely know that that loud noise can cause panic attacks in our dogs. But we can prepare for those, right? We can go out, we can get stuff from our veterinarians, we can turn the music up, sometimes um, it consistently you can turn the music up. I recommend people do for 4th of July panic attacks or anxiety for 4th of July would be to turn your music up and slowly keep turning it up as the day gets closer and closer to the evening when, the, when stuff will be going on. But what do you do when it comes out of nowhere? So what happened the other day was with a uh, yesterday with a dog named Westy who who's been boarding with me for many 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 years, and he's an awesome dog and he does great and we never have any problems or concerns with him. His mom always reports to us that he loves coming there and he runs in the door and that he had never done that anywhere else. And so, why would he have this panic attack? It was so severe that I almost took him to the emergency room and I had to call his mom because after about an hour I couldn't settle him down. So what we ended up doing, and it worked, and uh, it's what I recommend anybody do if they have a pet who has a panic attack. When Westy had his attack, and why it's important that I talk to you about this is because an animal can hurt themselves if they're having a true panic attack. Sometimes they'll self-mutilate themselves. They will chew excessively at one point. But you know if your dog's chewing on his feet, people will go, hey, stop it, knock it off, and they'll stop. If a dog is having a panic attack and he's self-mutilating, you cannot stop him. He will go and go and go until he causes harm to himself. Some other severe cases might be where the animal tries to attack his owner because he's in such a panic that if you try to hold him or help him, he'll just bite you because they want to go. They just feel this need. It's like there's a fire that they're trying to get out of, and that fire is in their brain. It's in their, it's in their body, and they need to get out. So when Westy had his, I, he wanted to get outside, and so he was running to the doors and trying to get out and trying to get out. And so I took him outside for a while, hoping that would help. And all he wanted to do was run 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 and he's an old dog that doesn't want to run any other time in his life and so it became very very clear to me that I had a severe panic attack but it was brought on by nothing we couldn't figure out what could have possibly brought that on for him it wasn't an unusual day at work we didn't have any other dogs with anxiety so so the next thing all I could do was hold him all I could do I was fortunate enough that he wasn't trying to bite me 
So I just held him tight and pet him and tried to calm him down. I was outside for a while with him trying to do that, but it, it wouldn't work. So I finally brought him into a room that we have at the spa that we call the Zen Room, and it's used for all sorts of things, dogs with anxiety, and sometimes dogs have anxiety and they don't want to eat around other dogs, so we'll use it for that. So we have different reasons um, that we'll use the Zen Room. So I brought him in the Zen Room, and you may find this very, very weird. What do you see? His, her, she, do you have, do not have a panic attack right now. My cat sees something. This is Luna. Actually, she's not my cat. She's boarding with me. Um, but she's been here for a very long time. That's a whole nother story. But she sees something and her little tail got all sparked up. But anyway, sorry, I digress. So I took Westy into the back of our facility where we have what we call the Zen room because it's nice and quiet back there and they can't hear anything that's going on. And then what I did, which is very interesting to me because it worked. Now, timing could have worked also. It could just be that the time was going to happen. But back when I was in college, I heard a speech um, that was done on Beethoven. And this girl did this uh, informative speech explaining about how Beethoven's music, specifically Beethoven's music, has an effect on the ear and the hearing and the brain. And they get positive results different than when people listen to other kind of music. I don't know why that is, and I can't, it's been so long, but for some reason I turned on Beethoven and I sat with Westy and we sat there for an hour, I think because I wanted to be really sure that his that his complete panic attack was gone and that I wasn't going to spark another one. And it took, uh, it took a lot. It took a lot of me being very calm. You cannot, if your pet is in the middle of a panic attack, I assure you, talking to them and using your language sometimes can make it worse because it's very, I deal with this. And I can tell you that when an animal is having a panic attack like that, it's going to be very hard for you to stay calm because it's scary. It's really scary. I almost brought him to the emergency room because I, you know, it was lasting so long. And so I just knew I needed to hold him and just stay calm and turn the music on. And I didn't say much to him other than just petting him and being there for him and rocking and petting him and rocking. And I, but I didn't say much. Um, and then soon I could notice that he stopped trying to keep getting away from me and back and wait. That's what he would do. Get down and go and get down and come back and get down and come back and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and to the door. And, and then finally he jumped up in my lap and I had to turn the music up really loud so that he could hear it because he was barking so much that he himself couldn't even hear what was going on. He was in such a panic. And then before you know it, Westy fell asleep. So that happened yesterday, so it's a little deep in my heart because it's just, it was, it was very scary for him and it was actually very scary for me because I don't ever want to have to have, figure out like what, how was I going to handle this situation? What was I going to do? It's somebody else's pet, so it puts me in a bad situation, but I don't ever want you to be in that situation. So what I want to talk to you about is the importance of diet. I know I always go back to diet and I'm sorry that I always go back to diet. You guys are going to get to the point where you're like, oh, what diet is she going to be talking about now? And I get it, but honestly, it does come down to diet a lot of times. And, and so many times I've seen the benefits of diet, and that's why I, I encourage you to at least try it. So when, you're, when you have an animal who has panic attacks and has anxiety, if you're feeding them, it's just like us. They tell you, if you're, if you're not sleeping at night, don't drink caffeine, right? It's kind of a no-brainer. The problem with our pet food is, we think it's healthy because we've allowed marketing companies to tell us that it's healthy. You don't even know what's in half of the stuff you're feeding your animals. And so, and if you are feeding your pet a kibble, I guarantee you it has sugar in it. And sugar is not going to be something you want to be feeding an animal who has panic attacks. Absolutely not. So what can you do? You can feed fresh foods. I always recommend for animals that have anxiety to be feeding turkey because turkey has tryptophan in it and turkey can be a more of a calming food that you can feed. So you want to keep your pet very calm all the time. Like I said, with a panic attack, unlike anxiety that you can usually, you know, you know if you leave the house, your dog's going to have anxiety, that separation anxiety. Those are different kinds, but a panic attack could come on for 
you'll have no idea what it is. Like I said, it could be a smell. He could have smelled something. I have no idea what caused it. Uh, blueberries are really good. Antioxidants, anything that has antioxidants are really good. Eggs are really good. I'm sure you've seen some of my videos. I talk about eggs a lot of times about how we can add those into our pet's food, but it has a lot of amino acids in eggs that are really good. Um, Anything that is high in magnesium you might want to do because magnesium is really good at lowering your anxieties and keeping that kind of at bay. So those are some foods you can do and some foods you shouldn't be doing if you have a pet who has uh, any type of a panic attack or even anxiety. You also want to look at the gut microbiome. That's super important and we can talk more about the gut microbiome. I probably will in another video soon. I'll be collecting some poop for you and showing you why, how you can test your pet's microbiome. But I encourage you to make sure that your pet has a healthy microbiome, which is basically their gut. Well, it is their gut. It's the gut microbiome. You have microbiomes all over your body and your eyes and stuff. Your skin is its own microbiome. But your your pet's gut is a direct link to his brain, which is what causes the, the panic attacks. And so we need to make sure that the gut and the brain are both healthy. And in order to do that, we need to feed them the proper foods that can give them the nutrients in order to feed the bacteria that exist in the gut. So... If your pet suffers from panic attacks, I am so sorry that you've had to watch your pet go through that. It was the most horrifying thing I've seen in a really long time, and I felt so very, very helpless, so I'm sure you do as well. But I promise you and I assure you that if you can get your pet on a, a healthy diet, work with a nutritionist, whether it's myself, a veterinarian who is a holistic veterinarian that can help you, guide you through some things that you should do. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if your pet has a panic attack, they absolutely can hurt themselves. They can go through plate glass windows. They can do all sorts of stuff. So if you have a pet who suffers from panic attacks, please don't leave them home alone because you'll never know what can start a panic attack. We suspect maybe possibly what caused his panic attack was a jackhammer that was going off, but it was pretty far away, but dogs can hear, feel vibrations, so we thought maybe he felt the vibration. Possibly he heard it, I don't know, but please don't leave your pets home alone. I hate to say that, I know it can be hard if you're working, what else do you do? But at the very least, make sure that they're in a very secure, secure spot, that if they do have a panic attack, and speak to your veterinarian, hopefully a holistic veterinarian, that can help you better understand ways that you can manage it so your pets don't find themselves panicking alone and forcing themselves through plate glass windows and stuff. There's, there, It really can help happen. So I hope this video helps. I hope all my videos help. I do really want to be your pet's life coach. I say that. I used to joke about it. A client actually called me at one time and I was like, that's funny. I could never call myself that. But in reality, that is what I am. And I, I love to coach people on all things, all things. So whether that's training, whether that's dog grooming, whether that's nutrition or if you just have some questions about what vaccines I would recommend that you give your pet. I'm always here to answer any questions. You can contact me at the spa anytime. You can also go on to our Facebook group which is called Millie's House and Millie's House you can get lots of information from there. We have some herbalists and some vet techs and stuff that can help answer questions. You can get those answered pretty quick. So, But again if your pet suffers from panic attacks I'm so very sorry that you and your pet are both going through it and I hope this video helped you. Bye.